Right, maybe um, we'll have a short discussion period, if time permits. Maybe the speakers from this morning's session can come up to the podium, please. And um, we'll open it up for a discussion. Dr. Feldman will uh, moderate. Let's take a couple of questions if you want to come up to the uh, mic, if you have any, any questions. Yeah. You can maybe just uh, announce your, say your name and where you're from. <coughs> Go ahead, Dean. Hi, my name is Dean Mikami from um, Columbus, Ohio. And my question is um, about uh, laparoscopic uh, surgery. So if you're doing a laparoscopic uh, cholecystectomy, uh, can you tell me what settings you use um, on your um, energy sources? Thank you. Yeah, I think that's a very practical question because we heard from Dr. Monroe a lot about um, how the cutting uh, waveform is probably the optimal uh, waveform for uh, controlling uh, vessels with coaptation, and that's probably uh, news to most of us in, in the room. Um, who probably don't use that routinely, or at least many of us don't. So maybe that would be a good way to start the discussion. What, what, what about uh, Brian? What kind of outputs do you use for routine laparoscopy, lap coli? So for for lap coli, I um, uh, I've gone to using cutting almost exclusively. Uh, I use a little lower energy than 30, usually around 25 watts, and um, I use I'm a hook guy. And so uh, I've actually learned to be a little clever about using that as far as spatula, hook, tension, even the angle and how much uh, is in contact. And I'm constantly telling my residents and fellows that the electrons need to jump across space. I don't want to see that pushed hard against tissue. I shouldn't see the tissue move when you apply it because uh, then you're not getting that energy density and that energy effect that you want. Yeah, I, I do a very similar thing, and I tend to do a lot of single incision gallbladders nowadays, and I find that you don't necessarily get all the tension that you otherwise would with your retraction on the gallbladder that you once had, and then using tissue density to your advantage is all the more important in those scenarios, I think, and so using cut mode uh, with 25 or 30 is about where I am, and then I'll find that I'll often fulgurate on the liver bed at the end. And Go ahead, to Dr. Monroe. Just for your, let's say for your regular uh, cases. Well, yeah, you know, we actually treat the two outputs as separate instruments, so that the coag, uh, so-called, in our uh, OR is off when we do the case. So it's never turned on unless it's asked for as a separate instrument. Um, Randy probably does it a little bit differently, but but that's how we treat it. We make them think about using that as a separate instrument, just because of all the different voltages involved and the different risks involved. And the setting really depends on, on the surface area of your instrument. Uh, and uh, I think for most uh, cutting instruments, about 30 watts actually works pretty well. 25, it depends on the generator as well. Uh, if you have impedance monitoring in your generator, like the Force FX or some of the new ComEd devices, you can run it at around a relatively fine electrode, around 25 or 30. But the old Force 2s that some of you might still have, you've got to run them a little bit higher. Uh, because there's no impedance feedback and the output of the generator falls off as it hits impedance. So, so I think you have to know a little bit about your generator. It's not like a laser where you can set a power density. Uh, there's, there's art to the entire process. So part of it's knowing your generator and working with the tissue outside of the OR to understand how the instruments that you use interact with tissue uh, before you go in. It's interesting when you ask a, a panel and you, you, these are supposedly experts, but you get different answers. Uh, I use, as I said in my slide, I use a 20 coag uh, for cholecystectomy because really you're dealing with small, small vessels. Most of Soderstrom's data about using the cut waveform for getting more homogeneous seals was dealing with thicker tissues. And what I'm really talking, I'm talking about is RMD, refined meticulous dissection of adventitial tissue. And, and I limit 20 watts coag because uh, uh, you don't get all the other problems and, and, and it's also a, a tapping effect instead of continuous. If I have a bigger vessel or with bigger tissue, I agree with using the cut current. But for the small vessels and just tissue dissection, uh, 20 watts coag works real well. Thank you. I think we have time for one more question. Yes, please. Uh, Saleh Bishri from Riyadh. Uh, my question uh, to Dr. Duncan, what's your setup in ERCB if you are doing um, ERCB uh, procedure? 
Uh, so we, um, I actually in the endoscopy unit, I use the Herbe unit um, almost exclusively for ERCP or for other work. Um, we, I'm a uh, pole sphincter tome person and uh, using the endocut uh, mode for that. Um, I, I think the same principles of kind of, of energy density and tissue application are often not understood in that environment. So on my sphincter tome, I'm using the shortest wire possible, which is a little bit of an anathema to some gastroenterologists. And I'm having the least amount of that wire inside the papilla because I don't need thermal energy given to the bile duct and pancreas duct. And I want as little pressure on the tissue as possible uh, to get the effect that I'm looking for so that I get a better uh, current density with little thermal spread. I actually think that pancreatitis is more related to our thermal application of energy than it is to injecting any particular volume into the pancreatic duct. Uh, is there any uh, guess only the, the number, the voltage, it's, you set it up in which, uh, which number actually, the usual set up? Yeah, you know, I'm going to be guilty. I have pre-programmed for my name, which is one thing we can do in there, and uh, I'm going to forget what the settings are off the top of my head, but we can, we can certainly, I can get that back to you at some point. The same thing you are using with the needle knife? Needle knife, um, I, I also use the same uh, setting, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, uh, principles have got to be adhered to even more because, as you may know, you can cause some pretty quick cuts with that. But I, I like the endo cut for that, too, because you get a nice controlled application. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, just in the interest of us having a little break, uh, we'll, we'll take a 10-minute break, and then we'll reconvene at 5 to 10. Thank you. <laughs>